And a bright good afternoon to everyone. I don't hear any. And a bright good afternoon to everyone. Yes. That's better. Now I know you're awake. Uh, before I start, I just would like to uh, say that Juliet and myself have the pleasure to uh, homestay a lovely girl from Japan. She's been here for a week now, Rika. And uh, I told her that Canada is not a nice place and we're sending you back to Japan. And she says, no, I like Canada. So let's, let's see if we can all make her happy. And then I asked her last night, have you ever read the Bible? And she said, what is the Bible? Have you heard of the Garden of Eden? No. Have you heard of Adam and Eve? No. So I, I'm glad that she's not been indoctrinated with so many different things, etc., etc. And I said to her, if you want to become a Christian, you will find love, help, upliftment amongst all of God's people. And I hope that we can offer that to her, that she can see, yes, there is love and upliftment to be a Christian. Welcome to Canada, little Rika. Okay, I'm going to talk about a double blessing. We've got the screen up the back there. A double blessing. Well, before I start with the double blessing, I'm going to talk about trouble. Not just tough trouble, but double trouble. Can you share with somebody about your trouble? It'll be so easy. I've got all the trouble in the world. I have so much trouble, I can spend three days telling you about trouble, my trouble. So why then a blessing? Many people in the Bible had double troubles, many troubles. Like King David, he was a shepherd, never been to school, never went anywhere, no education, and God said, I want you to be king. He's a little boy. I want you to be king of Israel. And then the king that was there, King Saul, was very jealous and he wanted to kill King David that is now being anointed. And it's not long after that his own son, Absalom, wanted to kill his father because Absalom wanted to be king. Do you think that that is trouble? Double trouble. Now, there are many others and I don't have really time to go through that. But if we go to John 20, 19, let's talk about trouble and the change of trouble. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked. Why? The doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Do you think that they are happy behind the closed door? They are in trouble. And all of a sudden, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace to you. they behind locked doors. So they're in trouble and they know they're in trouble. But they are hiding behind the locked doors and they say all of a sudden what are we going to do with our lives now? So all of a sudden, it's not on the paper, what will we do if that door in the front there is locked? And all of a sudden we see Jesus standing here and you all said you've got trouble and he says peace to you. Would you feel good? Yes, we will all feel good. So let's go over this special season. Peace be with you. So let's go over and know how and what Jesus put in practice to change that. Jesus now was raised from the grave. He died on the cross and he's now raised. And he caused many challenges for people that followed him. And he has to reveal himself that it is not trouble but peace as it says there on the, on the screen. The apostles are hiding behind the doors. They are in trouble because they followed Jesus who was crucified that night and thought that they will be hanged just like Jesus and on the cross. That's double trouble. Now let us review the situation from a different point of view. The Apostle John is writing double trouble for us. And we can read, I don't have time to read it, but you can read it in John 20 from 1 to 18. 
So here is Jesus. He was crucified. He was buried. Three days later, Mary Magdalene got up very early in the morning to go and see if Jesus is still in the grave because she wants to embalm him. And she discovered the tomb is empty. What happened? Not at all. There's no Jesus in there. And he, she ran back to the disciples behind that locked door and said, I have the, the tomb is here, the, the tomb, tomb is empty. They've taken Jesus away. But they didn't believe her. There are two double troubles here. Peter and John ran with Mary Magdalene to find the empty tomb. The other the unbelieving disciple said, we're too scared. We're going to stay behind, behind these locked doors. I'm not going to go out there in case they grab me and, and, and crucify me too. So showing a difference of John, he shows faith and he shows doubt against doubt. Because John shows faith. When he saw the empty tomb, he knew that this is not the end but the beginning. John knew Jesus was raised, compared with Mary, who still thinks that Jesus died and just disappeared. She was worried. She was in trouble. Though Mary talked to him face to face and didn't even recognize that she talked to Jesus. Right there, she did not recognize. John compares the response of rejoicing by the ten disciples in the locked room. Thomas was there, wasn't there. So he declares that I will not believe this unless I have proof. Now comes John with the second double. First we see an image of two doors. There's the physical locked door and there is the spiritual door of Jesus. I am the door to heaven. So there's two doors. There's a positive and there's a negative. There's the physical and there's the spiritual. And Jesus appears in the room and the physical door is still locked. But what does he say? Peace to you. Does that sound like double trouble? Not at all. So the two blessings. Two blessings Jesus visited them twice. The first time Thomas wasn't there. The second time Jesus visits again and shows his hands and his side where he was pierced with a sword. And what did he say to them? Sorry guys, I'm leaving you behind. I'm going to go up to heaven. Not at all. He says again the second time, peace be to you. That's a double blessing. If we go to John 20, 20, when Jesus said this, he showed then his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. They said to them, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. Do you think that the world today needs peace? Absolutely. These blessings can be seen all over in the Bible. You can start with Genesis right up to Revelation and you will see the blessings of peace with Jesus Christ and God working in the, in the lives of men. In Jesus, what was lost is now restored, but miraculously not just restored, renewed as we heard Dr. Williams was saying. Renewed. God is in forever in creation. So even using the double world, a word play, is not good enough. God is up to far more than just doubling a blessing. He aims to bring us into the very source of the fountain of all blessings. Jesus' own life and the love shared by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's a great privilege that we have. The world doesn't know that we have that advantage and that privilege to have peace in our life because we follow Jesus. Here's another way to look at it. Generally in all the scripture God is bringing us through the process of orientation. He wants to orientate ourselves from disorientation to a new orientation. Forget about the past. Forget about the fear. I'm going to give you peace. That is new orientation. When we go through the crisis like David, 
we experience a loss that amounts to disorientation. As we usually want to go back to the old things, I feel uncomfortable with this new thing. So we seek reorientation. However, not only is this impossible, but also not the pattern that God calls out for us in the Bible. So in Jesus Christ, God has done something new for us. He leads us to a new orientation, which rises above the past and leads us to a joyous, a joyous, think of the word, He leads us to a joyous future. We can see the story of Jesus meeting the fearful disciples in the locker room after the resurrection, then showed them, uh, then showed them the reality of Him being raised. I'm here, I'm here with you. I did not disappear. Let's take a look at them and keep in mind this double blessing. Remember this, this double blessing, the pattern of Jesus that is working in your life and our life at the moment. We can understand why the disciples walk them behind doors uh, because of the fear of the Jews. When we go through this, your, uh, this orienting events in our own life, we can be fearful of the future. Lock in ourselves away, grieving the loss of the past. Grieving the loss of the past. That's what the disciples were going through. We grieve that our Master Jesus Christ has died. But Jesus gets behind the locked doors. He doesn't wait for invitation. The disciples didn't say, I wish that Jesus was here to help us. Jesus came without invitation. And he's not hindered by, by our fears. He shows up with words. Peace be with you. How encouraging can that be? I'm sure they said to themselves, But Jesus, we are in trouble. Yet this should not have been comforting for them. Because that last evening, can you remember the night before Jesus was arrested? And they tried to see what is going to happen. They took off and ran. They ran away. Peter even cut off the ear of the one because he was so scared. Because they thought they were going to be crucified and uh, they abandoned Jesus and affected them fearfully. And they ran away after the crucifixion. Now all of a sudden they in fear and they still in fear. So Jesus goes above our past actions and past events of this disorientation that we are going through. He then restores us with peace. Who wants peace? We all want peace. We all want to get away from the past. We want peace. Lasting reconciliation that frees us from all past events and have left a scar and wound of the past. Jesus used his own scars and wounds that served as a bonding point to for the disciples. His own scars, he's using that now. And I'm sure the disciples fear that they're going to be caught by the Romans and also the same by nailing them to the cross and then also stab on the side. That's double trouble for them. They're still behind locked doors and they're worried. Here comes John 20, 21. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, even so I'm sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Now that changed everything. They were physical behind physical locked doors. And now they were spiritual, spiritual lock door to go forward. What a wonderful blessing to receive the Holy Spirit, to see the risen Christ displaying His scars. You can see it, Jesus said, you can see it. He displaying His scars, and I'm sure it was a message that the Roman Empire can have no lasting power at all. Jesus gets the final word, and that word is at the moment, peace. This is, was the second time that Jesus said that. That's double blessing. Peace be with you and eight days later, peace be with you. Not just the ones that I'm getting out here. Peace be with you. That's a double blessing to me. This was the second time. We can see the weight and the force of the reality of peace that Jesus brought to them. 
that's mending his twice. If we go to John 20, 24 and 29, that's a long one. Now Thomas was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told them, we've seen the Lord. That was behind closed, closed doors. But he said to them, that's the other disciples, but they said to them, uh, no sorry, he said to them, unless I see his hands, the mark in his nail, uh, uh, of the nails and the place my finger in the mark and the nails and, sorry I can't see, and the nails and place my finger in the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. That's how we are. I will never believe. Now eight days later, now I don't know what happened during those eight days. Were they still behind locked doors? Were they still sitting there very fearful? I don't know. But it says there very clear, eight days later his disciples were inside again and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, they were locked before, eight days later they still behind locked doors. They in trouble. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put, your, uh, put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Encouraging words. But believe. Thomas answered him. Can we say that? in your own mind. My Lord and my God. Jesus is standing here. Spiritually Jesus is here with us and we can say in our mind, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those, that's us, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. What a way to, for Jesus to portray that. You do not see me, but yet you believe that I am that spiritual door. Let's go further. In all of creation was called into existence through the spoken word. God spoke the word into existence. Then how much more in reality of something he speaks twice in the death and the res resurrection of Jesus Christ, we do indeed have a binding and lasting peace that is spoken twice to us. Not in those days 2,000 years ago. Today, peace be unto you. Peace be with you. Within this reality of peace given to us, Jesus then commissions the church. He tells the disciples, as the Father has sent me, even so, I'm sending you. Jesus' whole life and ministry was lived by the Spirit. Now remember, Jesus breathed the Spirit on them. And that fearful disciples changed in an instant to a powerful way of going and looking at the new spiritual way of life. The same way as Jesus. Jesus lived in the Spirit. From His birth, through the ministry, all the way to His death, all that Jesus said and did was done through and by the Spirit. This is how the church is sent today into the world, by the Spirit. We are not sent alone and abandoned. Debbie, you go out there and on your own, you go and preach the Gospel. No, not at all. We are not sent out by our own power, by our own cleverness, our own ability. Jesus began a new mission for the disciples and he breathed on them to receive the Holy Spirit. That's the new orientation. Not the old fear one, the new orientation of new spiritual thinking. Being sent does not mean being sent away from Jesus, but being sent with Jesus to continue his ministry. Jesus has now expanded his ministry. Not just the twelve sitting behind locked doors, he is sending them out and saying, tell the people about the good news, what is waiting. He instructs his disciples to go out and fearlessly complain and the for about the forgiveness of sins and the new kingdom to come. 
from King David. New kingdom to come. Jesus is going to be our new king. We see Jesus as the risen Christ and he now sends his spirit so that we can move forward into a new orientation. Not with disorientation. In this newness that we have life. New orientation. There is not going back to the past. But we need not to fear the future as Jesus stands as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, that's Jesus, redeeming all time past, present and future in the finished work of the cross. That's why he had to die. We are not left alone, but we are given the Holy Spirit who encourages us and empowers us to move forward. The disciples are about to take the first step of being fishermen to the new orientation to be missionaries. We are all, each one of us here are a missionary. We are Christians, we are followers of Jesus. And even yesterday when Juliet and myself were walking, we were shopping there in the store and the guy, I said, uh, yeah, fishers, fishers of men. And he says, what do you mean? And I said, you've never heard of that. And Jesus, uh, uh, Juliet came and says, you Fishes of men? What does that mean? Yeah, do you believe? No, I don't believe. And all of a sudden, Julian just starts telling him about Jesus. They were in the middle of the store. It was so beautiful. We are not left alone. The Holy Spirit will encourage and empower us to move forward. The disciples are about to take the first step from being fishermen to being new orientated missionaries. This is a double blessing for them. It's a blessing held out to us. You and me have got that same blessing. We know that Jesus was raised from the grave and we know that he has given us the Holy Spirit to give us the sound mind, the understanding and the, a way to go forward. From fear to victory. Yes, from fear behind locked doors to victory. Spiritual door walking with Jesus. Jesus is showing them he's not a ghost. You can see me. I was raised. You can see me. Jesus was raised with the body. He will restore and re redeem humanity with all our troubled scars. All your troubles will disappear. No more. And all our wounds with a glorified body and a glorious future we will end up. Isn't that double blessing for me. I get excited if I just think about it. That's a glory we cannot fully comprehend now as physical beings. But Jesus gives us a glimpse of as he stands unaffected and unhindered by the scars of his crucifixion. We can trust him that he will turn our scars and our wounds and change it into rejoicing. Thomas overcame his doubts, doubts, and so must we overcome our faith. Now for those that are not on the life group, uh, life group sessions, I encourage you to participate in that. What is the title? What God uses to strengthen our faith. And if you log in there, you will find that is what we are going through. Okay, let's go further. The devil, Satan, is our enemy. He is the thief who comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. But we have, to con we have conquered in the name of Jesus to proclaim peace. We can talk peace. We can discuss peace. So, I'm going to ask a question I'd like to see hands. Who would like to have a double blessing? Can I see hands? Who would like to have a double blessing? How about a triple blessing? A triple blessing. Yes, we all want triple blessings. Let's see if the, if the promise that Jesus gave there that we can have triple blessings comes from the Word of God. Not what I said. I am just here to what was told and came through to me. Tell the people of God there is a triple blessing waiting for them. Let's go through it. We have what God says we have. We have what God says we have. It's written in the Bible. 
Not me. It's written in God's Word that is the truth. And then it says, the first one, If any person who is in Christ, he is a new creation. We have been delivered from power of darkness. We are joint heirs with Christ. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings. Look at that. New creation. Delivered. Joint heirs. Blessed with a spiritual blessing. That is just a few blessings. Let's go to the next one. We have peace. We have everything there. We have peace. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have purpose for us to live as Christ. We have power. Not strength in muscles, but power by the peace that Christ is giving us. We have power. You shall receive power through the Holy Spirit. We receive provisions. God shall supply all our needs as you, not your wants, needs. We have an excellent future. Look at this one. I want you to go home with this. We have an excellent future. There are many mansions in our Father's house that is waiting for us if we continue to walk with Jesus. Who would like to have a mansion when you die one day? Can I see hands? Yes, we all want to have a mansion one day. Let's go further. What can we can do what God says we can do. Look at that from the scripture. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can share with the world what we have in Christ. What do we have in Christ? We have freedom. We have freedom. Peace be with you. Not war, not fights. We have peace. That's the freedom that Jesus gave us. Let us see John's double story of the ten disciples. They first encountered Jesus behind locked doors. Then a second encounter when Thomas included a double blessing. They told Thomas that they have seen the Lord and Thomas did not believe. Yet they are all hiding behind locked doors. They have not been baptized with the Holy Spirit yet. Little faith, very little trust. Many times we have done the same. Did you hear me? Many times we do the same. Little faith, little trust in Jesus. Whether through the life experience or human reasoning, we decide that it's difficult to trust Jesus. It happened to many times. We react by locking the doors of our mind. Locking the doors of our mind. That's fearful. That's not peace. That's not a Christian. We refuse to let Jesus in. Not today, Jesus. I'll do it my way. Faith in Jesus is personal. There's no one size fits all. I can't tell you each one on how your faith should be. There's no one size fits all approach to putting one's trust in the Lord Jesus. It's the work of the Holy Spirit in each and every one of us on a personal level. When you go on your knees and you ask for guidance, yes, it will come through by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not, uh, it is not some mechanical method. It's not automatic technique. It is not a magic formula to play. It's by prayers and supplication on our knees. Faith is a relationship and Jesus by the Spirit started this relationship the day when He breathed out that Holy Spirit and He says receive the Spirit. That's when that disorientation became orientation. Orientation, a new relationship with faith in Him. Yes, Faith is a relationship with Jesus by the Spirit that started. He will take whatever time. Jesus is not forcing us. He will take His time to tell us when we go to Him. What is our question to Him? Whatever approach that is fitting for each one of us to grow our faith in Him. But then, unexplainably and without our invitation, Jesus appears. 
like that day when they were locked behind doors. Whether we invite it or not, when you go on your knees and you ask, it is there. He doesn't need our belief or order uh, in order for him to present uh, to himself in our lives. He just appears behind locked minds, not locked doors, locked minds of unbelief and starts bringing forth the faith that we couldn't bring forth on our own because we're physical. Can we say, praise God for that? Yes, praise God for that, absolutely. Jesus finds a way behind all our locked minds and locked doors and He meets us where we are at that level. Building up faith that leads to eternal life with Him. Thomas was a man of His word by professing, My Lord and my God. Go home with those words today. My God, my Lord and my God. A double blessing. He has seen and he has believed. Jesus says, blessed are those who have not seen me, yet believed. And if you all say, I believe that Jesus Christ is my Savior, this is what it is. My Lord and my God. It's Easter, it's Passover time and Jesus is risen. In hearing this message, like you and me, we were not there when Jesus was raised. But we will share the same blessing when by facing by the risen Christ who gets behind our locked minds. Same way behind our locked minds to bring us faith in Him. That to me is a double blessing. Today we can receive this double blessing of placing our trust in Jesus who was raised from the grave to bring us new life, new orientation. Jesus is not yet done getting behind our locked minds. If you have a locked mind, Jesus is not done with you. He will work on you. He will knock on your door. Yes, to get behind those locked minds and He will bring us perfect, perfect peace. That's what we all want and we all need. As we continue this Easter season, remember our new orientation. In Jesus, where we find life to be joyous, to be abundant, and overflowing, happy, exciting life. It's where we find that we've been double blessed and even triple blessed. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Let's pray. Our loving Father, the Holy One of Israel. Father, we are so grateful that we can be in the presence of Jesus Christ unseen at the moment but yet right here with us guiding and directing us inspiring us by the power of the holy spirit to say my lord and my god how wonderful we're so grateful thank you for your word your word is the truth and all the blessings that are in there and we just mentioned a few there are so many blessings triple blessing father we thank you for those blessings we take it in but Father, there's also the evil one, the devil, that wants to distort our minds and lock our doors. We ask, please deliver us from the evil one, so that we may come to Jesus Christ and say, Take my hand and lead me to peace, to understand, to worship and to honor and glorify the Father in heaven. We ask now for a blessing on the finger food, and we ask it in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.